So we just took a high-level look at the rack. Let's take a high-level look at the sequencer. Now remember, I hid the sequencer in the last video, so we need to bring it back. And the way we do that is by taking this little circle here and exposing the sequencer by dragging it up and down. There are a couple of other things you can do as well. There's an icon in the top corner here which does the same thing. It shows or hides the sequencer. So down in the sequencer, we have a ruler and we can drag in that ruler and see different parts of our sequence or our song. And we simply drag to move. And there are lots of shortcuts which we'll go into. There's also this button here, which makes the sequencer fill the entire rack. And there's another button which is great, and that's this one here. That lets me pop the sequencer into its own window. And I can resize this window, I can move it to a second monitor if I have one, which is a great idea. And I can work on it separately from the rack. And of course I can close it, and I have my sequencer right there in the rack window. So we're gonna keep it here for now. You'll notice there's a toolbar up top. There's a bunch of icons that allow me to edit the sequence. We'll talk about that. Edit mode allows me to go in and actually edit notes or automation. And you can see as I scroll here, the different tracks or lanes that contain note or automation information. When I select the base, I see the notes of the base. Let me click the plus here to expand it. And each instrument in my rack has at least one track or one lane of information. And just clicking on a track in the sequencer will highlight the instrument or device in the rack that goes along with that track. This Kong instrument, which is a drum machine, can be expanded to show different lanes for different sounds within my Kong drum machine. We're going to have a lot of fun exploring the sequencer in great detail. One other thing I want to point out is this area down below, which is called the navigator. I can move back and forth by just clicking somewhere in the center and scrolling my entire sequence. By dragging on the endpoints of the navigator area, I can zoom in on a specific area of the sequence or zoom all the way out to the full sequence. And then the one other area which we hid in the last video is the transport, which I will reveal now. And in the transport, I have play buttons and fast forward and record like a normal tape recorder. I have some counters. I have a tempo area to set the tempo of my sequence, which I can modify throughout the sequence. I have this blocks button, which lets me define sections of a song, which I can rearrange later, like a verse and a chorus. And clicking this button shows the regroove mixer, which lets me apply grooves to different tracks in my sequence. So now that we have an overview of the rack in the sequencer, let's go ahead and do our first recording. So please join me in the next video.